So the previously mentioned burn site located in the NDDW burn site um, by the Vosca School caught a blaze during the 2022 season. One year later, that's where me and Josh come in, and we were tasked with monitoring the vegetation in the area and assessing the overall health of the burn scar. As a site objective, we, we also had a little project going on comparing the Hink and Omar vegetation protocol and the commonly used line transit protocol, which BEMP uses. And for those who don't know, the Hink and Omar protocol consists of a 50 by 100 by 100 uh, cross with little uh, plots on the end. These are 30 by 15 meter plots and they serve to estimate um, percent cover of the ground. And the line transect is a little bit different, but it's the same idea. It's a, the protocol we used for the burn site was 200 meters across with five transects, 20, 40 meters apart, 40 meters long. And then the HNO protocols, Josh and I did by ourselves. Well, we had some guidance the first day. And then the line transect was completed by Josh and I and the, the MEM team. And what we found at this burn site was probably what we all expect. Um, it's not a good place for our local riparian flora. And since it isn't net, uh, historically driven by fire, we see a wave of salt eater, Russian olive coming in and taking over. With a notable exception of the Siberian elm, which you didn't find any at all for some reason. And The next point that we found was the complete lack of canopy forming trees. Um, like I said, no Siberian elm, and then the cottonwoods were pretty much devastated with reef sprouts here and there. And then finally, we had a complete lack of understory potential with the vast majority of the ground being bare. We calculated around 98% with the HNO protocol, but there's some standard deviation there that might kind of skew that. And uh, the fuel load, we also did some fuel load testing there and it's we haven't it hasn't been processed yet but it is primarily russian olive and pine woods oh and then our side objective which is comparing the protocols uh was to, uh, to see how effective they were at collecting vegetation data was which surprisingly, they were in the same ballpark within each other, but with very obvious implications for each other. We had the HNO protocol was easily completed by two people with little to no trouble. Although it took longer, it yielded satisfactory data collection. The BEMP uh, uh, veg protocol needed at least two more people to be completed in a timely manner, but it was able to be completed in one afternoon. In the end, the statistical data that we uh, collected was very similar to one another, meaning that either protocol is viable for vegetation collection, but with the difference being that the HNO protocol would be suited for teams of three or less, and the secondary, I mean, the, not the secondary, the, the MEM protocol would definitely need at least four or five to be completed in a timely manner. And then our second, our second project was a restoration uh, site we had on the eastern bank of the Rio Grande. And as we all know, we've been seeing a massive decline in cottonwoods and willows and whatnot. Um, so the city of Albuquerque has been having a handful of pole planting projects on the Rio Grande. And to do that, we used um, similar practices as the, what's it called, our Burnside project with a downsized version of the BEMP line protocol and anecdotal observations, you know, because those are always good. The data consisted of the categorization of planted and sprouted cottonwoods in the area by their overall health and condition. The sites were located on the east bank of the river, one around 500 meters from the Gabaldon parking lot, that way. And the other one was about a mile into the Shining River open space. And what we found was, you know, we had a variety of findings. The first thing we found was a difference in composition of the vegetation in both of these plots. And the Shining River was mostly dominated by pure dirt, with the pole plants not faring as well as they could have. 
as well as a pet, we also found a patch of willows located on the southern end of the site, which seemed to be part of a, those right there, they seem to be part of a bank lowering project. We weren't informed of any of that, so just wild guess maybe. Um, and apart from the, apart from what we found with the willows and a couple pole plants, there wasn't much growing um, in the Shining River site. Um, so yeah, we kind of just left that alone. Um, the Gawa Don was actually quite different. Um, it was way more lively with uh, varying degrees of the pole planting success. Uh, there was a variety of cottonwoods in differing states of health. No notably, we found a, a gradient of how these cottonwoods were, a gradient of cottonwood health um, with relation to the distance from the river. And obviously the ones doing, planted closer to the river were faring a lot better than the ones farther. And here's our restoration findings. We found that pole plants weren't doing as good as the cottonwood sprouts at the Gavalon site. Um, around two thirds of them weren't doing okay, not great, and about a third of them were just completely dead. Uh, there was some sites where like natural sprouts were coming in from just by themselves. Um, and there was a plethora of exotics, you know, obviously outnumbering everything in the area. And, well, this is our, the discussion. So seeing the state of both of these projects, I feel like it would be beneficial for both the ecosystem and the city to devote some resources into areas like these. It is very possible for areas like the burn scar to completely be taken over by exotics, further displacing what we have left over native flora and some further monitoring and revision of the planting strategies of the reforestation projects could ensure that we have a healthy ecosystem for years to come. And then my partner, he left me some notes. He said that um, it bears mentioning that the soil in the burn scar is worthy of further study in con concert with plant health in the area. Being highly contaminated with the ash, the pH may be affected, which could have been have unforeseen effects on the availability ability of plants to rec recolonize. Another aspect of the burn site that the picture does not properly convey is the blackness of the soil. Dark soil is able to absorb more heat from the sun. In concert with the lack of the canopy, it, creams to, it seems to create a hot zone that is hotter and drier than the surrounding wall scale. It would be an interesting moving forward to study these aspects and gain an understanding of the dynamics of post burn ecology in the changing wall scale. Oh, any questions? Thank you, Saul. <laughs> Um, I'd like to open the floor for any questions for Saul at this point. Yeah. Oh, where goes first? area in, um, if so, um, could that be one reason the pole planning wasn't working as well? Has it, um, is it just too deep there um, or too well, high? We couldn't find uh, like a, a bump well that we could use for the, the reforestation project, so we couldn't really assess like the exact depth of groundwater. But it seems to be like that's like the reason why there's like a gradient of health from, from for the, with the pole plants. Thank you, good presentation and good Thank work. Um, I, I didn't quite catch where the burn site was. Is it is burn site it is west side or? It's, uh, you know where Bosque School is on Montaño? Oh, okay, it's yeah, the it's Bosque like, School like site. like half mile into the forest. Okay. R rough estimate. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And, and you said you found mostly exotics, but not a lot M of regrowth Mostly exotics. Of uh, there was a lot of Russian olive coming in. Mm -hmm. Towards the edge of the sites, there was a lot of tree of heaven. Um, okay. A lot of salt cedar and no Siberian elm. And okay. then cottonwood was coming in, but it was mostly like re-sprouts from like the remainder of the, the burnt site. Okay, yeah. thanks. <clears throat> Do we have any more questions for Sol? Oh yeah, actually I wrote a, a bio blog about this. It's on the, the UNM bio blog site. If you guys want to look at that, like have a, like a boots on the ground view of what we did and how it went down. What's the blog again? Sorry. Bio blog? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like it's a pretty good read, but I'm, I might be biased. <laughs> Okay, cool. Anyone else? No? 
Thank you, Sal. All right, cool.